Hey everyone, Mark here at Matterport doing another video to show you how to bring the 3D data out of your Matterpack scan and into 3D CAD programs. So this is a scan of the Picasso in Chicago at Bailey Plaza. You might have seen it in Blues Brothers, the movie, and first started off with the BLK360 and then went to the Pro 2 camera. I did both devices in order to capture the perfect amount of information on this outdoor space. I'm going to go into the space here and show a little more information about what you can do. But as I'm doing that, I'm going to tell you the point of this scan was to take the details of this sculpture, this famous sculpture, and I want to see if I can use it. If I want to put it into a, uh, something like a 3D printer and render this exact sculpture in a 3D printer, or to insert this object into uh, some sort of a three-dimensional space. Um, that's just as a reference, um, any, anything you really like to do. So here I'm using the website, the my.matterport.com interface to do measurements. And this is the real view that the camera generated, the BLK360 view. And I can measure from the top of the sculpture to the bottom. But I can also go to the 3D view into our dollhouse view and do measurements there as well. Now these measurements on this uh, object, this sculpture, can reach as high as, well, look at it, it says 50 feet, just about. Um, this device can go quite uh, high into uh, the space, but it also is optimized in sunlight. So the Pro 2 camera would not have been able to gather such accurate data uh, on the top of that sculpture to the bottom. That's where the, the Matterport platform can utilize things like lasers, like the BLK360 from Leica. Here I'm taking images of those measures, measurements that I made. And I'm going top to bottom, and I'm, I'm able to capture that distance, the variation from the left lobe of the, um, the bird-like creature that, uh, that, that Mr. Picasso uh, created. Uh, I'm able to, to gather that information and then share it in an image. I'm also able to get the 3D data out, and that's what I'm going to do here. Uh, I'm going to order the matter pack, and then I'm able to pull out the full 3D point cloud that was rendered using the BLK360 and the Pro 2 combined. I'm going to download this data to my computer in a zip file. And then from that zip file, I'm able to save that information, uh, unzip it locally on my computer, and then bring that information into a CAD program like Autodesk's AutoCAD program. That's, that's, the, that's the path I'm going to demonstrate here today. So the goal is to get the 3D data that I've scanned of this Picasso sculpture into a CAD program. And I'm going to pick AutoCAD as that program. So what I'm doing is I'm saving the information in a location that I know I can locate easily after this process. So I'm scrolling through to make sure I've organized my files well. So I'm typing in Picasso. And then from there, I'm going to uh, unzip that data, uh, mark it as 3D data, and then unzip it. That's saved, again, locally to my own computer. And I'll show you the inside of that folder now. The first images we have here, the first files, are the MTL, which is to help organize all of these mosaic JPEG images that were created. This is the coloration for your point cloud or your mesh. These images are important. So we want to make sure that when we import our 3D data, these images are also imported as well. In addition to uh, these uh, JPEG images, we also have floor plan views. This is actually called the color plan, and it's a great top-down view that we automatically create in the matter pack that can be used by customers, and that it does have a scale on it. This is the process of bringing the information, the 3D data, into ReCap. Recap is Autodesk's program to bring in reality capture data. This is Autodesk's path and their workflow, so we're just making sure to follow it. So what I choose to do is I select the entire folder to import. Just like I showed before, all those images and those various files like the MTL, 
want to make sure all those images and those files are being used. So I'm bringing in the entire folder, not just the XYZ point cloud. So I'm selecting the entire folder to bring in the Matterport. And I'm just demonstrating here that the point cloud data has come across. Um, this information can also be inverted if you want to change the location uh, of the z-axis or the y-axis, insert coordinate systems, this kind of thing is done here. In addition, on the left side, this is where you'd bring in other point clouds or other 3D data sets. For example, a drone you use to gather data from the, the area, the landscape around your work site. That can be combined and recap. Now here in the model, um, it was a little bit faster. I have sped it up a little bit for our, our purposes here, but the process of bringing in this point cloud is just a um, just a minute or so. It's, it's very quick compared to a laser point cloud that you might be used to previously. Matterport 3D data is very, very, very accurate, especially with the BLK360, but it also is just the right size so it doesn't bog down your computer workstation. So the goal here is, again, to pull out that sculpture's data. Um, the images on the, the, the streaking color, the top and the bottom and the corners, that's actually um, a residual effect from me, the capture, capturing operator in the field. I let myself be captured by the camera because everything from the view uh, is not necessary on that side of the, uh, the model. Uh, so I'm actually obscuring my, uh, that residual color from the, the safety vest I was wearing. Um, and that's being, now this is being reduced. I'm not deleting data here. Though recap is where you want to delete data. If you want to delete data and edit it in recap, it's not a good operational practice to edit a point cloud within programs like Revit. It's best to do it in recap as Autodesk suggests. So here again, what I'm doing is I'm reducing the information that will be transferred over into AutoCAD. So I'm, I'm reducing the walls, I'm, I'm, I'm bringing in uh, the, the different features that are in the space just so there's less information being transferred over to AutoCAD when I'm ready to, to, to work with this piece, this piece of data. So again, I'm going to that limiting box uh, that anybody can use in recap, and it's quite easy to manually adjust the data that will be exported into AutoCAD. So here, this is, this is pretty good. I think I'm gonna leave it at that uh, position. And so now what I'm gonna do um, is I'm gonna be able to go and export this information. So the import click is right here and underneath is the export click. And you're to save it as an RCP or an RCS file. The RCP and RCS file is the minimum file that is needed to go into Autodesk's programs like Revit, AutoCAD, Navisworks. What you're doing is you're saving the information in an optimal way so it can be used by these AutoCAD programs or Autodesk programs like AutoCAD. So I'm saving it and asking, do you want to uniform, unify that data? Yes. What's happening is all those images I, sh I showed you before, those images and those files, those are being copied and being converted into an Autodesk format that's better read that way. So the file that I showed you before that can be deleted or archived, that information is always available on our my.matterport.com website. So back to the space. I'm inserting and attaching this point cloud into Autodesk. This is Autodesk that I've opened and I've been navigating through and I'm finding that RCP, RCS folder. See, I'm dropping down RCS, finding that Picasso, and clicking open. And that's it, guys, that's really it. Uh, I'm gonna select the location, uh, but again, keep in mind the right side uh, on the insert tab and then attach clip on the right. And that's it, guys. This is the information that's now brought into uh, AutoCAD. So you can save this as a DWG file or a DXF or whatever you like to do in AutoCAD. This is the information that's 
that's been pulled out of the Matterport 3D data set. If you have any questions, contact me, Mark Carroll, at Matterport, uh, and I'd be happy to answer the questions or else put some suggestions or questions down in the comments below. Thanks, everyone, for your time, and I'll talk to you on the next video.